It shouldn't come as a surprise that in hard surface modeling, there are a ton of different tools you can use. However, there are five main ones that I think are probably the most useful and powerful that you can use in your hard surface modeling workflow. And we're gonna discuss those five today. So the first one I'd like to discuss is cutting the cutter. Now, don't take my explanation as the only way to kind of utilize this concept. You can use the concept of cutting the cutter in many different ways. I'm gonna show you two of them. So let's say I have a cube here and I wanna make a cut in the cube. I'm gonna go ahead and do something like this, right? So basically what has happened is whatever area that this cutter is occupying is getting removed from the main mesh. Pretty simple Boolean, right? So basically what this means, if I remove areas from the cutter, then the original area from the main mesh is going to come back. So for example, if I take the cutter and I cut the cutter, then it's going to remove a portion of the cutter, which in turn is going to bring a piece of this back. So let's go ahead and show you what I mean. So if I go in here and I cut a piece from the cutter, notice how I'm now removing a part of the cutter, which is going to begin revealing the original mesh. And if you want something a bit more visual so you can kind of understand how that works, if I just simply shade solid the cutter, you're gonna see that's all the cutter is. So obviously, whenever this is cut from the mesh, it's not going to occupy it, right? Make sense? There's many different ways you can use this concept. Uh, one that I used recently, I'll kind of show you how you can use this in a different way. So one I used recently was with a cylinder. I had something like this. So I had some simple shape kind of like this. And what I wanted to actually do was I wanted to make a little cut in here. So I kind of made a cut like this, right? And then I did something like that. However, if you take a look here, you're gonna see, what if I wanted to line this cutter up with this curvature right here. I didn't want it to just cut through. This is where you could once again use the idea of cutting the cutter. So for example, what I could do is I could, you know, maybe add in a cylinder again. Could rotate that cylinder, scale it down, and you could just eyeball it in this case. Scale it up a bit, and then all I have to do is recall that cutter, use that other cylinder, let me select it. I think it's on the inside here. I could use that other cylinder as the cutter for the cutter, and then run a difference boolean, and look at that. Now I have something that is pretty much perfectly lined up with that area. Obviously, you'll have to clean that up. You'll have to you know, merge these vertices together, but you can do that on your own. Now, I'd say my second favorite tool is stealing geometry. So this is a very useful technique because you can use it in pretty much any situation. So say, for example, I wanted to make a cut that kind of followed along with this area here. So what I could do, for example, is I could kind of try to eyeball it, you know, run a cutter kind of like this, and then maybe bevel it so we can kind of, you know, line up that bevel, but it's never going to be perfect. So instead, what we could do is we could actually take a piece of the geometry, duplicate it with Shift D, press P to separate it by selection, and now we have a strip of that piece on the top. And basically what I could do is I could now, you know, kind of cut this piece if I wanted to make it a bit smaller like that. I could simply apply those two booleans, and then I could maybe inset this a little bit, delete the outside. And this is how you can use, you know, stolen geometry to get different shapes and effects on your mesh. You can basically retain that curvature, retain the shape, and use it to make additional shapes, kind of like that. Pretty cool. Now this next one is probably the most powerful feature you will ever use inside of Blender. It does require a paid add-on mesh machine. If you don't have mesh machine, go and get it because there's no other tool that I know of that actually does this. So um, in mesh machine, you wanna make sure under the add-ons panel, you have the option here for experimental. Turn that on, turn that to true or it won't work. So check this out, what I can do, say I have a sphere and I have you know, a cut within the sphere like this, like that. If I wanted to make a chamfer around this, if I wanted to chamfer the area around here, I can't actually do that very easily because check this out, if I chamfer it, we're just gonna have a mess and then I'm gonna end up having to go in here trying to slide these vertices away. It's gonna be a pain. 
Now, a lot of people would say you could use CAD at this point. Yes, you could use a CAD software. Or what you could do instead is use Mesh Machine's offset cut feature. So check this out. If I press Y, go to offset cut, what this is gonna do is it's going to basically add a protection loop around the outside and around the inside. And I can kind of adjust this and make a buffer for that chamfer. So the more I push it out, the more it kind of eats the surrounding geometry. So now I have clean topology that I can just, you know, bevel around this since we just have a nice strip of quads around here. Well, not quite, but you know what I mean. There's basically going to be enough buffer for me to bevel all the way up until about this point or however far I made that offset cut. So now we have a nice chamfer. It doesn't have to be a chamfer only, you know, you could add in a bevel, but the whole idea with the offset cut is to make enough space so that way you can add this more complex type of geometry that you otherwise couldn't do because of the mess I showed you before. One other thing I do want to mention is that with Mesh Machine, you can also select through N-Gons pretty easily. So if I hold Alt and try to select around here, it's not going to select like I want it to, but what I could do instead is select an edge and then alt select an edge and mesh machine is going to allow us to select through n-gons as well you can't do that in native blender as easily now the fourth option i want to show you is something that a lot of people um, probably know intuitively but aren't quite using so say for example i have i don't know a cylinder and i want to cut this cylinder through maybe another object like a sphere probably a round object so kind of like this so i have a result kind of like that Maybe I'll put it up here for emphasis. So if I run a difference boolean on the two and maybe adjust the auto smooth angle a little bit, put this to 30, it's usually a good value. You're gonna see we have a nice cut here, but the shading is absolutely awful. You can see all these different shading streaks here. And if we take a closer look, the reason that's occurring is because we have a curved area in here, but these are all n-gons. Notice that although they look like quads, they're actually not because we have one, two, three you know, four or five, and pretty much all of these here are n-gons because of all these extra vertices surrounding the outer portion. So the best way to kind of isolate that shading to mitigate it, and you can do that by adding additional geometry to the cutter before you apply it. So if I just undo this, get back to the cutter, all I really need to do here is run some loops through it, and this is all going to be forced onto the mesh because this is what's being used as the boolean. So Whatever I add to the cutter is going to be transferred over to the mesh, as you can see here. So now if I apply the boolean on this piece, you're going to see the shading is much cleaner and all of the shading errors have basically been isolated only up to these corners here where the n-gons and triangles are much, much smaller. And you could clean this up even further by once again using Mesh Machine and perhaps using the boolean cleanup tool where we can kind of merge some of these vertices together in a much better fashion to make the shading even cleaner. There we go. And my last favorite trick is the reverse bevel. So the reverse bevel can be very powerful because it can get you different results that you can't otherwise get manipulating the geometry on the main mesh. So for example, let's say I, I don't know, I go in here, add in a cube. I'll show you a very basic example to begin with. Let's add in a cylinder. I always like to make the vertices a bit higher. Maybe I scale this down. So if I, you know, run a Boolean cut in here, we're going to have a simple cut. So if I wanted to put a chamfer around this mesh here, around this cut, what I would usually have to do is apply the Boolean and then select this area and then chamfer it that way. Maybe make the geometry connected up a little bit better, but you get the idea. And this is how I would usually have to add in that chamfer, right? Now, the issue with this is it's destructive. Once I apply the Boolean, I can't really make any other changes. If I want to do this non-destructively, I can actually do this directly with the cutter without having to apply it. So check this out. So if I go to the cutter right here, what I can do instead is bevel the top face. Now, the bevel right now is going to bevel inwards. I want it to bevel the other way. So what I can do is press Alt-N flip the normals and now the bevel is going to be flipped the other direction so if i bevel it we're now going to get what i call a reverse bevel applied directly to the cutter and we might need to adjust the auto smooth here as always 
put it to 30 or something like that. And now if you take a look, you're going to see I have the same exact result, but this time I don't have to actually apply that Boolean. I can remain non-destructive in my workflow if I choose to do so. So I hope this video kind of gave you some different ideas for you to use in your own workflow. If you're new to Blender, these might be a little bit advanced or a little bit confusing, and that's totally fine. If you are new to Blender, check out our Hard Surface Jumpstart course on our website. It's totally free. It'll get you up to speed with Blender very quickly, and everything that we mentioned here should be a little bit clearer to you. So you can grab that in the description if you are new to Blender. If not, I hope this gave you some additional ideas for you to use in your own workflow. If it did, drop me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.